Years ago, while being at Youth Exchange, I was housed at Grunsley with other exchange youngsters. We had a nice evening, playing music, swimming, dancing, some drinking, chatting and stargazing. I went to bed after some time, maybe around 11pm, and was a bit bitter of it since I was having a lot of fun, but being absolutely too tired. I was sleeping like a rock when I woke up from a loud, cheery conversation, in German, and I don't really understand or speak it. I was wondering that, wow, my friends are super loud. And then there was a man shouting something in German again. The silence fell and I decided to just try to sleep again. Sometime after that, I woke up again. A woman and man were arguing in German at loud tones somewhere. And soon I heard the man leaving the woman crying alone. I could hear her sobbing, but could not say where she was exactly. I went to sleep again and after only a few minutes, I heard how a woman was screaming for her life. I got up from the bed and walked to the window to see if I would be able to see anyone, but there was nothing to be seen. Just a calm night. At morning, when asking about events of the night, there has not been anyone coming and shouting to the rest of the youngsters. They had also stayed up until 3am, which also was way after the screaming I'd heard. And yes, nobody had heard the crying woman or the screaming either. Even they should have heard something, since the hostel was not that big and they had not been loud or anything since it was already silent. This happened years ago. I was 16 years old at the time. It's a story that always gets retold to visitors and new friends. It was a regular weekend. My mom, my uncle and our house helper and I just got home from our leisurely trip to the mall. We shopped for some groceries along the way. We rushed to get in the house to store all the groceries and make dinner because it was already quite late in the evening and we were hungry. After working together to organize all the groceries in the pantry and to cook food we would be having for dinner, we cleaned up and all gathered in the living room. We all sit down on the couches to rest and unwind while we wait for the rice in the cooker to be done. As we chat and laugh about random menial things, we all see my mom reach into her pocket to place her car keys right on the coffee table that's in the middle surrounded by everyone in the living room. A few minutes later, we hear the rice cooker click, signaling that the rice is done. We all then rush to the dining table, excitedly serve the food and engage in lively conversation while eating. Not long after, we cleaned up and headed again to the living room to sit and watch TV. Then, my mom reaches out to the coffee table to grab the remote, and we all notice that her car keys are gone. We're all baffled. No one has touched that table except for her when she placed her car keys on it. She tells us to help her find it, so we scan the entirety of the first floor. We ransacked it, checked every crevice and corner. We found nothing. So we agreed to look upstairs even though we knew we wouldn't find it there. Take note that no one had left the first floor to go up to the rooms of the second floor until we decided to go up to look for the car keys there. We were all together in the same areas of the house on the first floor and we all gathered together to go up to the second floor at the same time. We all decided to work together to search my mom's room not seeing any trace of the car keys and ultimately agreeing to humor my mother's ridiculous idea of checking underneath the mattress of her queen size bed. To our confusion, disbelief and shock, we found the car keys sandwiched in between the heavy mattress and box spring. Right as we lift the bed, we see it there wedged in the tight space, placed right in the middle. How did the car keys end up there when none of us had the chance all time to put it there? I just remembered this from the year 2013. I was working as a patient care tech at the local hospital where I live, and there had been many strange occurrences. Most of the time, it was usually my co-workers that experienced it the most, and almost always during the night. They told me about this apparition that would walk around in the Obgin units when it was empty and dark. So, me being me, wanted to see for myself on one of my night shifts. No one, not one patient or co-worker of mine, was in or on that unit, so I knew no one would interfere with what I was about to do. 
I took out my voice box app to test it out. I started asking questions. No answer. I sat down in the nursery area where they take babies for the parents to rest. The minute I sat down, the voice box started talking. Nursery. Baby. Died. I freaked out and booked out of there. Which, looking back, kind of makes me chuckle because I was the one who put myself in that situation. And I was already amped up because of the stories my co-workers told me. When I told my co-workers about it, they had told me that when the hospital was just starting out, I really wish I remembered the year this happened. They had an incident where a woman lost her baby in the middle of the winter time. They had nowhere to place the baby. They didn't have a morgue or anything of the sort and the parents didn't have all the arrangements done. So they placed the baby in a room with the window open to preserve it. Still gives me chills to this day. This will be quick. It's awkward in many ways, but paranormal nonetheless. It was in one of my worst weeks of the year. I was about to become homeless and I was thinking about suicide the whole week. I thought of several ways to possibly do it. So one night, the night before I thought it was it, I decided to sleep a little first, just get my mind ready for it. I'd learned to tie a hanging man knot or whatever the name is. But something happened. I woke up. A weird person with a strange face molested me. I don't know if it was a person, but certainly not human. It got on me, put one hand on my forehead to pin me down, and the other on my balls. All I could try to do was say, hey, hey. At first I tried to elbow it in the face, but when I realized I couldn't do anything, I just let it happen. I was freed for a second but then went back to sleep. I was aware I was sleeping. I knew it for a fact. I normally wake up when that happens, but this time I stood there. I couldn't get out. I was in the house that stopped being my house after grandma died. I had to move out of there. I tried to leave, but I couldn't, and that damn thing was there with me. As if in a game, I noticed I was locked. So I started looking for the key. When I found it, I opened the door, but I almost got pulled back in by that thing. But grandma was faster. She pulled me out. It was raining. She said, it's all good now, son. I finally woke up. I cried for the first time in years. Grandma came to help. And to make me understand if it's not easy, but there's always a healthy way out of a bad situation. I haven't felt scared or uneasy ever since. I know I'm strong because grandma raised me. Hello all. I'll start by saying I never really believe in cryptids. Bigfoot, etc. Aliens, maybe, but I'm not sure if they've visited us. I'm 22 and have lived in the suburbs most of my life. But the last two years I've lived with my girlfriend near some forested Michigan state land. Nothing weird. I've always loved the forest and nature. Deer, fox, coyotes and all I've seen around here and they are always a welcome sight in their natural environment. Sometimes I've been scared by the occasional set of deer or coyote eyes illuminated by headlights. This was not that. I rolled into the set of houses that are surrounded by this land around 11 at night. I see the neighbors with all their lights on, staring out their windows and searching for something. Guessing it was just a dog or something, I slowed down and began to pull into the long driveway. As I reached the foot of the driveway, I saw something I couldn't explain. It had legs like a deer, but much more muscular. But instead of the thin coat of a deer, it was a reddish brown coat, much longer than compared to that of a fox. Besides this, I moved my eyes up the thing and see its face. It had a head covered in fur, but it was shaped like a human's head and had long, hunting dog-like ears. I saw no eyes and no mouth before it ran off next to a mailbox. The decorative top of this mailbox goes up to my shoulder and it went up to the animal's back despite it being on all fours. I'm 6'2", so it must have been over 5 feet tall at its back. As it ran off, it had no tail and looked incredibly skinny. 
And that was it for my sighting of whatever this was. For the next couple days, I've assumed it was a mutated deer or something with Mang. But ever since three nights after I saw it, I have not felt well. On the third night since the encounter, I failed to fall asleep until the sun went up. With only a few hours of sleep, I felt terrible. Assuming a lack of sleep was to blame, I ignored my initial symptoms. After a night of sleep that lasted about seven hours, I continued to have these symptoms as follows. Dizzy episodes lasting about 30 seconds that only happen, I purposefully look for something. Keys, wallet, look on both ways to cross the street, and even looking for my phone when I know it's on the table beside me. Weird images in my head of accidents involving me. Fire from my phone being charged and the battery exploding, getting hit by a car backing up in a parking lot, and much more I've forgotten since. Finally, I've been having the occasional nosebleed. I've only had one nosebleed before seeing this thing, and it was when I broke my nose as a kid. Now, I've had two incidents where my nose just begins gushing blood. Since I was little, I felt like ghosts are real. We lived in a home where several of my grandparents had passed and where even other relatives had either passed or they suffered something that led to them having to go to the hospital where they eventually died. I remember things happening like cabinets being shut after I closed them. It weird and weirded me out because I knew for a fact I shut them. Come to find out my great grandma had a pet peeve of leaving cabinets open so she would close them. In high school, I would come home and I'd be alone for hours. One day, I was alone and I left my room to go to the kitchen. I tripped over my giant rubber water boots. I remember looking back to see what I tripped on. I saw my boots laying on their sides and my door was half shut. Fifteen minutes later, I went back to my room. I saw my boots were sitting upright, propping my door back. It really shook me. Since then, I've had dreams that happen. I thought it was deja vu, but it isn't. I'll remember the dream and when it starts to come true, I'm able to predict what will happen next because I saw it in the dream. I also have bad feelings. I get a feeling of dread and I know something bad will happen. Example, I got my first car. I was excited, but when I got in to drive, I had an awful feeling. I ended up wrecking that car on my way home and not even an hour after buying it. I had a feeling that I wouldn't see my kids be adults. A month later, I legit died after birth complications, but after an eight day long coma, I lived. Basically, I get a feeling and it happens. I thought I was crazy for so long. But the other day, I mentioned to my mom that I had a bad feeling and my daughter had a dream that was similar to my feeling. My mom casually said, oh, I wonder if you and her have my sensitivity. Turns out she had the same thing. She told me she had a dream where she knew she would die in 2022. Since all these dreams and feelings happen, I'm terrified that I'll lose my mom next year. As a child, I grew up in Sydney, Southwest Australia, a suburb called Rosemeadow. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Well, there are no roses, and half of the suburb is housing commission and was known for being a rough area. Nevertheless, I enjoyed my childhood, and me and my friends made the most of what we had, so we spent a lot of time playing in the local bushland. We rode bikes, made tree swings, caught frogs, and just explored. I dare say I know that bushland like the back of my hand. There was never really anything eerie about that bush except for the fact that there was a nursing home located on the western side of the bushland upon a large hill called Kilbride Nursing Home, which security would patrol, so we got chased out of that section of the bushland a few times. Behind the nursing home were catacomb type structures built as if they were going to construct another building, but never got round to finishing it. We explored these random concrete foundations with cave-like half-dirt, half-brick structures. It seemed like people used to hang out there or even sleep here, as we found canned food, some old dirty bongs, old clothes and just random shit. Anyway, life goes on, and it's 2003 now, and I'm 14 years old. 
I doubled with marijuana and thought it would be an awesome idea if me and two of my friends pitched a tent on the western side of the bushland, further down a valley from the nursing home, so we weren't too close to the security car's patrol paths. I think we bought a $40 tent from Kmart, and at about 4pm, we hiked to the chosen location to set up the tent before the sun went down. I managed to get some weed, had a bong, and it was all three of our first times properly smoking. We were all excited as I imagine most kids would be when they're about to experience something new and exciting. We didn't tell anyone about our plan as we knew we were going to experiment with drugs and I didn't want anyone, including our parents, finding out. The sun went down and I remember we had a little fire going and we all had a cone each. My friends were deep in conversation and my mind drifted off as I suddenly felt a presence around us, as if someone was watching us. My ears pricked up and I felt super sensitive, thinking I could hear rustling in the distance but wasn't quite sure. My two friends were having a great old time giggling like schoolgirls as they sat across the fire from me. Blame it on the weed, but I got paranoid and flailed my arms around and sternly let out a shh to my friends. They looked at me like, what the fuck? And I whispered, did you hear that? And before I could finish my sentence, an eerie voice howled from the darkness, piercingly loud. I know where you are. Kind of sounded like a crackhead. I was shocked and glared at my friends to gorge their reactions because surely they'd heard it too. And yet, after about two seconds of all of us frozen in shock, we all jolted up and our instincts just had us running back towards the nursing home to exit the bushland. Whilst running, I saw a large dark silhouette figure of what resembled someone in a cloak like a grim reaper, standing on top of the catacomb half-built infrastructures as we ran through the valley. When I saw the figure, I remember thinking what the fuck, but I wasn't going to stop investigating it more. We finally reached the exit of the bushland and looked back in relief and confusion at the bush, at which point we all saw a white apparition at the bottom of the hill coming towards us. We continued to run back to my house as it was close to the bushland. I got affirmed by my friends that that just happened and we all experienced the same thing. Pretty sure we just slept at my house that night, not wanting to go back to the bush until the sun was out. The next day, we went back to the tent and cleaned up our mess. And although we had a bad experience during the night, playing in the bush was our thing, so we continued to enjoy it during light hours. As we were playing by the tree swing, which was about 15 meters away from where we had the tent the night before, we suddenly hear shrieks and screams come from what sounded like a young girl who then yelled, help me, and then the sound of someone starting up a chainsaw. I looked over the mound of where the tree swing was, but I couldn't see much through the thick shrub. I didn't even think people could get to that side of the bush as there was no flat ground or pathways, just thick bushland. So once again, we all ran back to my house and got my dad to bring my dog and come help us search. What was very bizarre was that when we reached my house, there was an old Chinese man riding his bike around the front of my house, who wore a bucket on his head as a helmet. I had seen that guy around town before, and just always thought, ha, how strange he wears a bucket. But this time he was riding right near my house, kind of just circling around, and the look he gave me made me feel very uncomfortable. We took my dog down to the bush and again, found nothing. These experiences have made me wonder and think, sometimes even question me and my friend's sanity. Were we all going through the same psychosis? Was the Chinese bucket hat man hysterical in some way and fucked with us for fun? Who yelled out to us? Who was the girl screaming? Was there actually a crazed maniac with a chainsaw ready to slaughter her? Does the nursing home hold dark energies and entities that play tricks on peoples in the bushland? To this day, I will not know the truth, but it was all very strange. I don't know if it's a poltergeist or some other spirit. Sometimes I have things taken from me. No matter how hard I look, I can't find it. Several months later, I dream about the item being returned to me. Then, poof, it's in a very obvious, visible spot in my room. Back when I was a student, I lost a tiger's eye necklace in school. 
I looked all over campus, but it was gone. When I went home, I combed my room from top to bottom. Months passed, and one day, I dreamed about a tree spirit in the middle of a garden. It told me to put my hand inside its trunk to retrieve my necklace. When I woke up, my necklace was right beside my pillow. Another time, I lost my grandfather's Swiss army knife. He passed away several years ago. When I wasn't hiking, I always kept it safe in a drawer. Then one day, it just disappeared. I checked every nook and corner of my room. I even checked hiking bags in case I forgot to take it out. This morning, I dreamed I found it in front of my grandparents' house. When I checked, it was on the desk. I don't get it. They don't need the objects they borrow. What do they do with it? I'm pretty sure I didn't misplace it because I'm usually pretty organized. It's almost as if it vanishes and reappears for no reason. Now my three-year-old kept telling me my family died. I was weirded out by it as she is my biological daughter and never lived with anyone else besides my husband, my son who's eight, and myself since birth. So I asked her, what do you mean and how? It's three-year-old talk, but I understand most of her words and sentences and will repeat her to make sure it is what she said. This story goes, my family died, they hurt me, not nice, it made me sad. I asked if this was her before family. She said, yeah, my other family died. I was with other kids in a room. Jesus with me, I'm here. I asked if she chose us and she said, yeah, I choose you, I love you, you're nice. I just left it at that. Years back when my son was about the same age, three, same biological born from me and never left my side, etc. He said something similar I'll never forget. Mommy, I had another family before you. I died in a fire in a store. He went on about being in a room with other kids and how he got to choose us as his new family. He kept retelling the same story in full detail until he was four, and now he doesn't remember any of it. Is it common with kids to talk about a previous life? So I'm just laying on my couch watching GTA videos on YouTube. As I'm watching my videos, in the corner of my eye, I saw a figure similar in shape to my girlfriend walk out of the room towards the kitchen, as if she was about to get milk ready for our baby. But it was like she was on 1.5 speed, so I thought she may have been angry with me for some reason due to the speed she was walking. I looked up at the kitchen to tell her I would go change his diaper, but nobody was there. She's dead asleep right now. I'm certain that I just saw some sort of apparition that looked exactly like my girlfriend going to prepare the baby's milk. Maybe she accidentally astral projected or something and I just happened to notice her. I don't know if that's even possible. I hope that it's not a doppelganger. I'm currently feeling extremely uncomfortable as if something is here. Impending doom is the best way I can describe the feeling and I haven't felt this way in over 20 years when I lived in an extremely active house as a child. Not sure if this is related, our baby was non-stop crying all day, which is unlike him. He cries a lot, but never as much as he did today. Maybe he noticed something malicious. So we have china cabinets that both contain bright lights inside that that can be turned on. One in our dining room and another one upstairs in the master bedroom. We haven't turned on the lights inside of them in at least 10 years. Yesterday at midnight, both of them upstairs and downstairs lit up at the exact same time, super bright. I was beyond startled and shut them both off immediately. Within a minute, they both turned back on on their own, simultaneously. Again, I shut them off and they kept turning back on. The cabinets have settings in which the lights can either be dim or bright. I started saying out loud, if this is a spirit, change settings. And immediately they went from bright to dim, then dim to bright, changing settings so fast on their own. My mom and I were just standing there in pure disbelief. 
This went on for six hours straight until the sun began to rise. How can it be in ten years we never turn those on and then within the same night both of them turn on and off like crazy on their own non-stop? Then the next morning our pantry light which has been burnt for two years somehow turned on on its own very brightly. Two years ago my father passed away suddenly in a car crash while on his way to work. He's come in my dreams numerous times crying asking why did it happen to him. My mother thinks it could have been him. I'm so confused and don't even know what to think. I'm just beyond freaked out. Thoughts? The day before Father's Day, someone followed my significant other and I almost home. I'm starting to think it was something and that it hasn't left. We were followed for at least 30 minutes. We aren't sure how long it went unnoticed, so it could have been longer. We made some quick decisions and lost the car before we got home, but things have been strange since then. I've seen a shadowy figure in our front yard regularly. I've tried to ignore it, but yesterday something more alarming happened. I had just come back inside and was trying to lock the door when the knob was yanked in the opposite direction. I stared at the door for a moment before locking it successfully. My significant other hadn't seen it, but when I went to tell him, he had a very uncomfortable expression. I asked if he felt it and he said he was overwhelmed by the feeling something bad was about to happen. I think it's worth mentioning that while I am Wiccan, he isn't sure how he feels about this kind of thing. I had to go back outside later and the figure was standing near my significant other's car and appeared to be interacting with my neighbor's outdoor cat that was in the yard. The cat was looking up at it like the figure was communicating with him or something. It was odd. I didn't connect the dots at the time, but around two weeks ago, we also found a dead bird with what appeared to be its heart removed beside our front steps. We left the house with the plan to bury it when we returned home, but when we got back, it was gone. We brushed it off as one of the neighborhood cats at the time, but now I think about it, that doesn't make sense. The hole where the heart was removed was almost a perfect circle and there was no blood anywhere. When it was gone, there was no evidence it had ever been there at all. We do seem to have a positive entity protecting the house. I see that occasionally inside and have since moving in. It was startling at first, but not negative. There was also an incident where a house fire was stopped due to our malfunctioning microwave unplugging itself. If this hadn't happened, there would have been a fire. I firmly believe our good entity did this. I also believe it's preventing this bad one from coming inside the house. I've cleansed the house with sage, burned a white candle for purifying, and made protective pouches for my significant other and I. I don't want to put salt down as our animals inside or the neighborhood cat outside could eat it and overdose on the sodium. But I'm going to try the brick dust when I can get some. So, one month ago, I went with my friend on my grandma's house for vacation in a village. The village is a paradise and it was where I spent my best times of my childhood. My house is very big, with a big garden and has two apartments, one downstairs and one upstairs. And I don't mean two floors, two apartments with every kind of comfort. Usually I spend my days in the downstairs house, but now we took the upstairs house for ourselves so that we wouldn't have anyone to bother us and so that my grandparents would sleep in their own quiet. Me and my friend had the whole upstairs apartment for ourselves and my grandparents would be downstairs. We'd stay for a week there and we already had many plans before we went. I always wanted to play the Ouija since I was 13, but I never really got the chance. And now I was with my friend, we were free to do whatever we pleased in the whole apartment with no one to interrupt us. No better chance. So the first night of our visit when my grandparents went to sleep, we went upstairs and decided to play with the Ouija board. We took a cardboard paper from a notebook of mine and wrote down all the letters, the numbers, and we used a bottle cap for a pointer. We made the room dark. We lit up two white candles and we just sat down on pillows. 
My friend started to say calling to someone whatever would come to us. And in the beginning, we didn't say anything. We were asking the same questions like, is there any spirit who wants to speak to us? If you're here, please point the cup to the word yes. After a while, I could feel the cap moving and we didn't do anything. I could feel the pressure that my friend didn't try to put in the cup. I could feel another hand with us in the cup. I could also feel the cold, the room being cold after a while and dead silence. No grills were heard outside, no air, no dogs, anything. At first I thought she was the one who was moving it, but after a while I realised she wasn't even touching it. She only pointed her nail in the cup. We called several spirits, but we never did have a conversation. My friend was telling me all the time that there were signs that showed that we had summoned bad spirits. Signs like the candles which they had their shadows larger than from the lightings of the flames. So when we asked the spirits some things and they were answering only with yes. At first we didn't succeed in anything until we managed to summon a spirit and talk to it. Fully. At first we contacted the spirit of a boy named Orestes. He told us he was 17. He didn't remember the way he died. We talked about common things. Last we avoided questions about death. When my friend asked him, what's keeping you here with us? He answered, pain. I could see my friend's reaction so she couldn't do this by herself. A chill was having control of my whole body. And I swear I could feel the air freeze and I could no hear another sound of the night except for the movement of the cup. Sometimes neither me nor my friend could control the cup sometimes. It was moving by itself and we followed. When we talked to him, I could feel a mixed feeling of terror, sadness and emotion at the same time. I don't know if I wanted to cry or laugh or tremble. We finally said goodbye to Orestes because you mustn't speak to his spirit for too long. And then there was the second spirit, an 18 year old girl named Xenia. It was worse this time because we could feel the movement being more intense. She said she was studying medicine and that she actually fell off a building by herself. I think you understand. Because someone abused her. I think you understand what I mean again. We did it. We actually called a spirit in our house. I wanted her to stay with us a little more, but we couldn't keep her. So then we burned the board and went to bed. Both of us could feel a positive feeling after the connection, but we knew we had to be careful. And the interesting part was that we called ghosts aged, almost like us. And then we decided to do it the next night. We made another board, but didn't find anything at all. Loss of time. And then we decided to do it for a third night. Things turned different from then. I must say that these particular days, I wasn't very okay. Now I'm fine, don't worry. And I think I brought a lot of negative energy. We contacted a couple of spirits. All of them made our fingers feel cold when we touched the cup and my friend said she could feel negative energy and black shadow on her back. I think the room was much darker than last night. And then I could feel it again. The same dead silence and chill in our bodies. Eventually we called our last spirit. And I'm not sure of what it was. Then I was persuaded that the Ouija board was real. Every time we asked for a question, most of the times it was answering the same thing all the time. Go, go. Like it wanted to give us a message or like it was obsessed with the name. It's a nickname from the name Georgia that we use in my country. Every time it wanted the opportunity to say go, go. Even when we asked other questions, it didn't write clear words. It confused the letters and tries to say go, go all the time. Like it showed up for this reason. And then I said I had to try to attend a test I wanted to do. I wanted to see if my friend was actually fooling me and I asked the spirit about one of my fictional characters, I'm a writer by the way, which my friend hadn't heard of before, with the name Nora. There's no way she could know. She's not good with names anyway. So I asked, what's the name of the character I'm thinking right now? At first it answered mixed letters, which wanted to say the name, but also wanted to say Gogo again. And when I asked for the second time, it wrote down, Nora. That's it. I now believe in ghosts. After that, 
The spirit started to become furious and wrote down many shits I didn't actually remember, but included Gogo all the time. We said goodbye, burned the board, and then tried to spread positive energy all around the house by dancing around with music late at night. I hope my grandparents didn't hear us. Or the whole village, bro. Then we didn't play Ouija board again. Yes, I think now I believe in ghosts, but I don't believe in demons, or haunted houses, or other shit. This is the reason no one believes in ghosts, because of what the movies show. And I don't think they can kill you. The worst thing that can possibly to you is that they fill you with negative feelings, or make you not breathe well, or causing you nightmares or bad luck. But I don't believe we can see them or touch them. This is my experience with a Ouija board, and even if some of you would not believe it, I swear it is absolutely true. Around five years ago, I visited my uncle and my two seven and five year olds at the time nieces with my grandparents. They lived across my country, so we spent a long weekend there. Let me preface this story by saying that both my grandmother and me can feel spirits. I've never actually seen one, but I felt very oppressive atmospheres at several locations, which later turned out to have some form of paranormal history. The visit and stay at my uncle's house marks my first real encounter. I've only ever felt a similar feeling walking the beaches of Normandy. Prior to my uncle moving the house he used to serve as the mayor's house and before that as an orphanage or something along those lines. My youngest niece, let's call her C, made an imaginary friend a little over a week after moving in. Obviously, she was at the age when the child's imagination runs wild, so my uncle and aunt didn't really pay attention to it. Some things my uncle described to me is C going to the hallway and talking to herself, and C giggling or playing with someone who obviously wasn't there. This never caused any problems, however my older niece, S, did mention a few times that C would talk in the middle of the night with her friend. What is freaky though? is that both my nieces would wake up with the same nightmare at the same time, describing that a man stood in the corner watching them. They share the same room, so obviously it might just be explained that one niece heard the other waking up and freaked out as well. But the nightmares were a recurring thing. So now to my own experience. When arriving at that house, I immediately felt something was watching me. I just brushed it off, saying to myself, it's a new place, so obviously you will be more alert. At night, me and my uncle decided to watch a movie. Throughout the whole movie, the hairs on my neck were up and I felt icy cold, as if someone was watching me in the corner of the room. Coincidentally, that specific corner is where C would regularly go to talk to her friend. This is something I learned later though. At night, when I went to sleep, the whole house again felt very oppressive. At one point at night, something fell in the house, scaring the living shit out of me. I also heard footsteps slash knocks and similar things. My uncle and aunt are skeptics, but do acknowledge that a few times would be items would be misplaced and pictures falling off the wall. They've recently moved to another house, which made me think of the things I've experienced there. Could someone maybe explain what has been haunting that place? I helped my uncle move to a new house this month. Me and my brother slept in their new house while my uncle, aunt and two cousins slept in the old house. The whole move took around three days, spent three nights in the new house, and this encounter only happened on my final night, which is the night when my cousins slept in the new house with us as a type of sleepover. In the old house, my uncle reported things disappearing and then showing up a few days later, as well as voices and footsteps. Even my aunt, who's a skeptic, found the things happening to be very odd and unexplainable. I never really enjoyed sleeping in the old house as I knew something was haunting it, so I was glad I was able to stay in the new house for my stay. However, I learned soon enough that the things that were happening in the old house also started happening when my cousin spent the night in the new house. At 3am, my cousin S came to my bed and told me she was ill and that she had a stomach ache. I brought her back to bed and waited until she fell asleep, until I went back to bed myself. Around 10 minutes after I went in bed, 
I started hearing footsteps above me. They were too heavy and loud to belong to my cousins. They were only eight and ten. I got out of bed to see if S got out of bed as I knew she was not feeling too well. I investigated both my cousins' rooms only to find both of them to be asleep. I found this to be really odd. But things get even more weird. I went back to bed quite weirded out by the fact of the footsteps. However, not even 10 minutes back into my bed I heard a loud whooshing sound coming from the main floor. At first I shrugged it off and thought to myself that whatever it was would stop eventually. However, after several minutes passed and the sound did not stop, I started to become more and more freaked out at the sound, but I knew that I had to go downstairs to go and investigate whatever the thing was, what was causing the sound. I creeped downstairs to find that the vacuum cleaner was on. I quickly did a main sleep sweep of the main floor to see if anyone was there, but everything was empty. I unplugged the vacuum cleaner and hurried back to bed, hoping that this was the last time I had to get out of bed. But it wasn't. Around 3.45 a.m. my other cousin C started shouting S's name. I once again got out of bed to check up on C. C told me that she had a nightmare. Obviously I thought it was quite normal for someone like her to have a nightmare the first night in a new house without her parents. However, what she described to me did not sound like a nightmare. Rather it sounded like she saw an entity. She described that a tall man stood in the opening of her door and simply just looked at her. I calmed her down and 20 minutes later she fell back asleep. I went back to my own bed, even though I knew that I would not sleep for the rest of the night. I've not told my uncle about this encounter, as I don't want him to give him additional stress from this move. I don't know why I experienced, but I know that it freaked me out enough to not sleep for the rest of the night.